Although dramatized, the following is a true story. Stockholm, December 22, 2000. Gentlemen, the Swedish National Museum. 90,000 square feet of priceless artwork. Only two roads in and out. The police will be ready. Walking away with the goods won't be easy. Smash and grab job, huh? Not quite. First things first, a distraction. At exactly 4.55 p.m., five minutes before the museum closes, we blow up two cars outside the Grand Hotel and the Strand. Naturally, fire trucks and police will be dispatched. What about the guards in the building? Only one. And he'll be busy ushering everyone to leave. Now, we get ourselves armed and approach. Meanwhile, two of us are already inside waiting for the signal. Once you hear those explosions, put on your balaclavas and take out guns. All right, so I'm going to pause here. I'm going to pause here because I got a comment that said the last time I was eating, I was just eating and talking with chat. And apparently that's not reacting. Question time, ding dong. So I just want to make it appear like I'm, you know, reacting. Is this a bank robbery? It's a museum. Take it out. It? They stole the tobacco from. Get on the floor. Don't move. So the standard disarm the guards and get everyone on the floor. That's right. Then one of you stay in the lobby while the other two make your way upstairs and into the gallery. Now remember, gentlemen, no browsing. We're here for three paintings in particular. Conversation with the Gardener and Young Parisian by Renoir and a self-portrait by Rembrandt. All right, I'm not an art guy. How much, like, how important are those paintings? Now, are you guys just saying very because they're in this video or do you actually know? You know what? That's a good idea. Conversation with the Gardener. All right, let's check them out. Ding dong. Research time. Conversation with the gardener worth. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. List of stolen. Oh my God, it's stolen. This is a spoiler. Yeah, we need to watch the video. Gardener okay. and Sorry. Young Parisian by Renoir and a self-portrait by Rembrandt. So how do we crack the safe? There is no safe. No security cameras or alarms either. Wire cutters are all we need. So there's no cameras, there's no security for these like expensive paintings. Okay. <laughs> Amateurs. <laughs> we bag the goods and bust out the front door. And we're just supposed to walk out of there with the three paintings and not get stopped? Yep. Won't take the police long to catch up. That's what I'm counting on. A little surprise I prepared earlier. <laughs> And from there, it's an easy walk to the docks where we've got a boat ready. Mm. We skim around the waterfront and down the labyrinthine canals of Stockholm and make a beeline. Wait a minute. Does this have anything to do with the Italian job movie? <laughs> no, kek that, yeah. I like that movie, actually. And for Mela Lake. Then we dock in a quiet area and make it on foot back to the road. Let me guess. You already have a car waiting. Of course. Mm. We drive back to the city, get back to HQ, paintings in hand. And congratulations, boys. We've just robbed the Swedish National Museum for an estimated $30 million. We found out how much it was worth. Damn. And that's exactly how all of it played out. The next day, the police had cleaned up the torched cars and they were questioning staff, getting any clues they could about the suspects. They didn't have any faces. They didn't have any DNA evidence. It was a professional job and there was very little to go on. Until someone came forward. A witness. An old man. <laughs> I, I was working on the river when I saw three lads <laughs> speed off out of the area in orange. Um. <laughs> Boat. Did you get a good look at him? I, you know, but they seemed suspicious, so I followed him. Followed him right <laughs> through the canals into the Malar. I, and right <laughs> to the shore 
where they parked their vessel and abandoned it. It's <coughs> very sweet. Can you show us where on the map? I. So the police sent out a couple of cars and found the boat. Here it is. Nothing inside. No paintings, detective. Damn. What about the registration? Nothing, sir. Well, I guess the only thing we can do is put out a picture of the boat and ask the public for help. So they published pictures of the boat in the local newspaper and asked people... The art of the steel. Why are all the headlines in Swedish newspaper in English? <laughs> is that true? It's not? Okay, people okay. To come forward with <laughs> like information. That. The next day. Oh, that's my boat. The boat owner paid the police a visit. I'm Pa Lundmark, and that's my boat. What happened? We'll ask the questions. Well, I just sold the thing last week to three chaps who looked a bit suspect. Did you get their names? Afraid not, sorry. Although, when I sold the boat to them, they asked if they could use my trailer to transport it. And? Well, I said yes, but only if they gave me their phone number for safety. Well, have you still got it? <laughs> yep, here it is. I wrote it on the back of the receipt. And this is where everything unraveled for the thieves. Because despite all of this Ocean's Eleven style bullshit, they had used <laughs> their re what? real phone number. So police looked up the number and everyone they had called. We've got a match. The number was connected to a gang of petty thieves. They were not big time criminals. They had done small stuff like car thefts, drug peddling, and so on. They were not criminal masterminds. This thread of evidence led to two men serving sentences in a minimum security prison 10 miles from Stockholm. A Russian named Alexander Petrov and a Swedish national named Stefan Nordstrom. But wait, these men were behind bars. They have an airtight alibi. Right? Well, turns out they are considered low-risk prisoners, which means they are allowed weekend furloughs. Essentially, they're just doing jail as a day job. And while good boy Petrov had returned from his weekend away. Holy shit, you could do that? You could just like clock in and serve your jail sentence? That was normal? Holy shit, dude, over here, they lock your ass up, man. Dude, you could have like weed or something to be thrown in with like a murderer. Dude, over here, man, they don't give a shit. Nordstrom had not. So police went to work searching Nordstrom's empty cell. Aha. Lo and behold, Nordstrom had been doing a bit of light reading. Collections of newspaper clippings from past art heists. Very subtle. On top of that, Nordstrom had reportedly been visiting a bunch of auction houses in the area. They were clearly the painting bandits. Now, here's the thing about art thievery. It's a difficult game. Unlike jewelry or other valuable goods, you can't just offload these anywhere. You need a buyer who has a lot of cash and is willing to take a huge risk themselves. Possession of stolen property is a crime and they wouldn't be allowed to keep the paintings if word ever got out. So essentially, they had $30 million in unsellable goods. <laughs> Dude, so, what do we do? Oh, we could sell it to a billionaire in China. <laughs> okay, do you know any? <laughs> no. Yeah, I thought so. So shut the fuck up and think of something better. Why don't we just ransom it back to the museum? That's not the worst idea in the world. December 28th, 2000, six days after the robbery. Petrov's lawyer approaches the police station. Hello. Yes, hello. I am here on behalf of my client and acting as an intermediary. We have your paintings. Go on. I am here to negotiate it safely to your return for a modest sum. Uh-huh. Interesting tact. 
This is, of course, completely... They're trying to resell them back? Illegal. Lawyers can't just negotiate ransoms for their clients. Got any proof you have the paintings? Right here. The attorney then revealed hostage-style photos of the stolen <laughs> art, complete with that day's newspaper. Hostage-style photos. Right. So who are these clients of yours? Can't say. Lawyer-client confidentiality and all that. Right. Well, let me just have a chat with my supervisor. The police feigned interest, but there was no way that... I really like that the main character, the lead detective, is the guy from L.A. Noir or whatever that fucking game was. I like that. They were going to pay a ransom when they could simply catch the guys. So instead, they stalled and placed a surveillance team on Petrov for yeah. the next time he met with his attorney. I don't remember his name. <laughs> a couple of days later, that meeting took place. And surprise, surprise. They're not alone. Nordstrom had turned up as well. Wait for it. See you soon. Take care. Now, now, now. Go, go, go. The police moved in on Nordstrom. What the? No, I'm <laughs> innocent. Save it for the judge. Ah, what do we have here? <laughs> Those aren't mine. In a moment of sheer genius, Nordstrom had decided to bring with him a bag filled with Polaroids of the stolen paintings. Is this how you get your kicks? Oh, they'll be sick. Get these to the lab. Later, the lab found Petrov's fingerprints all over the Polaroids. Yeah, Cole evidence, Phelps, they that's obtained right. They to raid a cellar that the gang Cole frequent. Phelps. Look everywhere. They may have left the subtlest of clues. Anything that can even give us a scrap of... Detective? Here's a date book literally showing all of the details of the heist, including all of the co- Super secret plan, 4.55 p.m. Lay nails on road, blow up cars to distract police. Stefan goes into museum with gun. Quick lunch break. We, we all pull out our guns, steal paintings, rush down to boat, speed off to Malar. Return to Stefan's apartment, return some DVDs. Dear diary, today the guys were kind of mean to me. I hope it's just because they're nervous about the big art heist job that we're going to do. They want us to wear masks and use guns, but my mask is pretty itchy and the guns are really loud and hurt my ears. I really, really, really really excited to be rich though anyway gotta go diary love conspirators <clears throat> nice work detective thanks detective hey do you know what time it is uh is it it's time for a montage in all police arrested and charged 13 for the heist nordstrom received six and a half years oh. Petrov received eight. Uh, three others were given between two and four years for accessory, and three more men received sentences for up to four years for receiving stolen goods, and five more were accused and subsequently acquitted. One of them included Petrov's criminal lawyer, who was charged for accessory to attempted extortion for his involvement in putting forward the ransom note. Well, we got the bad guys. But there was a problem. They hadn't recovered any of the paintings. They had searched the cellar top to bottom, the homes of the criminals. They had questioned all of them, and no one was giving up the goods. Judge Judy. What is it, honey? Is it the paintings again? I just can't stop thinking about it. They're Same face. Just come back to bed. No. I think I'll go for a walk. Couldn't sleep either. No time. Rumors are circulating that Renoir's The Conversation is going up for sale. Count me in, detective. 
I just have to get suited up. You're gonna need something a little less... official. We're going undercover. Ad time. Okay, quick hypothetical. <laughs> Let's say you were single, and I also happened to be single, and we were browsing the web together, right? And then you said, oh, let's let's go on this website. Would you let me use NordVPN? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't mean, no, I'm not being serious. Although, okay, you're drowning, right? And I rescue you, and you don't have a boyfriend. And I'm like, oh, no, I have to give you mouth to mouth, or you'll die, right? You'll die. And I don't know how, and I want to Google it. But I'm worried about my data falling into the wrong hands. Could I use NordVPN then for 70% off? No, no, wait, 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 wait. Uh, okay, we're in the Amazon forest and we're like walking together. But not, not too close, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and a snake bites you. Oh my god. Uh, and I have to suck out the poison. But then I remember watching this documentary, right? And it was on like snake bites and stuff. And I'm going to watch it again and I'm going to save your life. Oh my god, it's region locked. Would you mind if I slipped in a little Nord VPN. Not even for 70% off? No, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing. Could you imagine, though, if I use Nord VPN right now? Like, for real? No, no I'm not, I'm not going to use it right now. I'm not, I'm not. It's, it's, it's dumb. But, like, no one's around. If I was to use Nord VPN, no one would know. No, wait, where are you going? I mean, look, wait, wait, wait. Nord VPN lets you use six <laughs> devices on one account. You can use one of mine. Your boyfriend won't know. Like, like, watch this. I just type in nordvpn.com slash incognito and I get 70% off a three-year plan and it's done. Where are you going? I can treat you better and keep your data safe with NordVPN. <gasps> oh my god. Wouldn't have happened if you got NordVPN. <laughs> <laughs> Add over. <laughs> Swedish police set up an <laughs> undercover agent to infiltrate the ring and to buy the Renoir. The detective would be posing as a representative for an interested buyer nice. who was standing by. But they'd need confirmation that the painting was the real deal. That's him. Art thief? Yes! Are you the buyer? That's me. <laughs> I represent a very wealthy and very interested client. But of course, before we can start negotiating, I need to know that we're talking about the real deal. All right, mate. Come with me. The undercover agent followed one of the men into the bathroom. Okay. What do you think? That's... that's quite something. Come on! My client will be very pleased. Okay, okay, okay. What do you say to 200k? <laughs> that sounds acceptable. Uh, in, in fact, it's quite low. <laughs> My rich buyer probably would have paid a lot more even. Whoa! <laughs> Fantastic! Yes! Hey! Dead in! They both washed their hands and exited the cafe. Seconds later, police came screeching around the corner, sirens blazing. Sorry, fellas. It was me the whole time. <laughs> <gasps> oh? Oh, right, we've never met before. <laughs> well, book em, boys. Oh, you fucking mug! Fuck you! I'm gonna fucking take you down to China's hell! They had done it. <laughs> Partially. They had retrieved one of the three paintings, and they had a bunch of new leads. The cops rounded up even more members of the gang, among them Alexander Sasha Lindgren and an Iraqi Baha Khadum, as well as three of his brothers. Now, remember these lads, we'll be coming back to them. But even though they rounded up all these guys, only one man would have charges against him that would stick. The rest walked. And there were still two pieces of art out there. Among us. Los Angeles. Four and a half years. Damn, later, they only recovered one of the paintings. LA. The FBI are working on a routine case. It's a drug bust with some Bulgarians. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Until they heard something 
unusual. Yeah, so we've got Renoir's young Parisian for sale. Is that code for something? Are they human trafficking? Chief, I believe it's that painting that was stolen from the Swedish National Museum a few years back. Hmm. Yeah, we want to get it out of the city. Sounds like it's going to be on the move soon. No one's going to take our credit. We're the FBI, damn it. Infallible. Pillars of competence. So they ramped up surveillance. The Bureau intercepted a call from one of the gang's higher-ups. Boris Kostov. It's time for a good old-fashioned stakeout. The FBI waited outside Kostov's home until they saw him load up a small, painting-sized package into his car's trunk. Yeah, yeah, we got it. I told him to be careful. Should be eight tears of rips. We're going in. Get down, get down, get the fuck down. <laughs> the FBI swarmed. Kostov surrendered. We've got it, Captain. Ha <laughs> the big prize. FBI wins again. So they opened the bag and found... Dry cleaning. <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> Shit. Rest them anyway, boys. So they pull Kostov in. Okay, I'll be good cop, and you also be the good cop, because people like it when you're nice. Good thinking, Captain. Look, here's the thing. You surprised us with the laundry. Those whites. Very white, by the way. I'd like to know who you use. But the thing is, we've been tailing you for months, and we know about the drugs. And that's the bigger deal anyway. Oh yeah? You got any evidence? Yeah, all of this. The overwhelming amount of evidence means Kostov is definitely going to be found guilty, and that means possibly 30 years in prison. At his age, this is effectively a life sentence. In a corner, Kostov broke. Yeah, all, all right. All right, I know where your paintings are. I want to deal. Kostov agreed to assist the police. Good choice. Now take us to the paintings. Kostov led the police to a local <laughs> corner shop. Down here. As they entered the basement, Kostov pointed to an art folio leaning against the wall, wrapped in towels and a grocery bag. They unraveled it, and surely enough, it was the young Parisian. And in good condition, too. Bingo. Two out of three. The only one remaining was the Rembrandt. However, with Kostov as an asset, authorities now had a way to find it. Give me the other painting, Kostov. I don't... But I... Yeah, okay, I got contacts in Sweden. Wait, no, that one was correct. Say that again. <laughs> I know people in Sweden who know where it is. So it's not here in LA? No, it's back in Stockholm. You sly bastards. But how do we know you're telling the truth? Sorry, sorry <laughs> reflex. That's okay. Because. Yes? Because. Yeah? Because the person who has <gasps> it. Yes? Is my own son. Alexander Sasha Lindgren. Oh. My. God. I know, right? Kostov was willing to incriminate his own son to avoid jail time. Damn! Anyway, back to sweet. Dude, I, I don't know if he's the number one dad. I don't know. In Stockholm, the son, Lindgren, was being pressured by his associates, Baha and Dea Kadhom. Those are the guys from before, by the way. To sell off the Rembrandt. It's been almost five years, dude. Are you gonna sell this thing or not? Well, I do enjoy looking at it, but I suppose you're right. The FBI makes a call. Sweden, my man, I got a tip for you. I can't understand you. Yeah, just speak, speak English. Put someone on the line who does. Okay, thanks. Hello? English? Hello? Okay, cool. We have a tip for you. The FBI tells Swedish authorities to put surveillance on Lindgren and the Cadhams. Lindgren, unaware that his father had betrayed him, would be caught up in the sting. That's crazy, his father the betrayed him. But if they That's were going to pull nuts, this off, dude. they would need to call in their top dog. That's crazy. Part scholar, part daredevil. Ooh. All right, I have no idea why he's written this way in all the articles. <laughs> And had years of success posing as a crooked art expert, typically masquerading as a buyer for organized crime, part scholar, part daredevil. Women had managed stings in Paris, Philadelphia, Rio de Janeiro, Miami, and Madrid. He had recovered works by Degas, Rodin, Goya, and Dali, as well as hundreds more American and international treasures. Articles, but we're going to go with it. <clears throat> the king of the sting. 
the defender of Dali, the guardian of Goya, half scholar, half daredevil, and 100% man. With an alignment of chaotic good, he'll teach you about the classics, then he'll teach you to make love. Robert K. Whitman. Part 5. Copenhagen. September 15th, 2005. The meeting had been arranged. The Cadham brothers are on a train from Stockholm, secretly followed by police the whole way. And as they sit in their seats, in the hand of one of the brothers is held a small painting-sized parcel. Police could have arrested them then and there. They would have had the brothers red-handed. But that wouldn't be enough. It would be a simple <laughs> possession of stolen goods charge, and the police wanted to catch them in the act of selling <laughs> the painting. So they stood by. Kostov and Whitman arrived at the Scandinavian <laughs> Hotel. The Cadams and Lindgren made their way too. Oh, hello. Hey, guys. They said in Swedish. Do you guys want to do the deal now or grab lunch first? No, let's just get this over with. Okay, come with me. Come on, son. Let's throw the old football around. But dad, come on, son. Look, dad, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm proud of you, boy. <laughs> Whitman led Cadham up to his room. The room had been thoroughly bugged in preparation. I hope you like Swedish Corona. Mmm, nice. I'm gonna have to count it though. No problem. Whitman knew he had it. He could see the look in Cadhum's eyes as he greedily counted the money. So, uh, you guys had like a good trip out? Mm-hmm. See any, uh, good movies lately? <laughs> you know, there's a delightful restaurant down. It's very hard to count when you keep talking. Oh, okay. All right, and that's 200,000. Amazing. Five years of holding on to this painting, seeing all of his buddies go to jail. For 200 grand, it would all be worth it, and it would be over. Well, we got a deal. Baha then stood up and left the room with the cash. Hey, wait. Baha went back down the lobby and was making his way to the exit. Wait, what's happening? Baha walked right out the front door of the hotel without saying much of anything. What the hell's going on? Has the deal soured? Has our cover been blown? Is this a cross? Police on standby were starting to get nervous, but Whitman was staying cool. Seconds passed. Just hold steady. Minutes passed. Stay cool. <laughs> They're getting away. Stay cool. And then... They came back. With a different bag in hand. It turns out, the bag they had before was a decoy. They were using it to see if any cops would be drawn out. Now that the deal seems solid, they brought the real thing. Got him. Cadham returns to the room. And Whitman examines the painting. That's the real deal. Danish SWAT is standing by and ready to swoop. Whitman spoke the code words necessary to launch their raid on the room. Would you like an orange? Uh, excuse me? My favorite color is orange! Uh, okay? <laughs> I mean, orange, you glad? I said Orange? Uh, anyway, thanks for the money, but, uh, we gotta go. No, wait, let me arrange you a cab. <laughs> That's okay, we'll walk. The SWAT team burst into the room as Whitman jumped into the bathtub, clutching the painting to his chest. The SWAT team quickly overwhelmed the stupefied suspects. The arrests of Baha Kardham, his brother Dia, and the betrayed Lindgren went off without a hitch. Whitman emerged from the bathroom victorious. Women swooned, men swooned, I'm swooning. Jesus, what a man. Looks like you're caught by the police. Yes, well done, Whitman. And we would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for your sly doggery. <laughs> Thank you. Now, take him away, boys. 
Whitman held the painting aloft. It was now safe. He returned it to the Swedish National That's what Museum, I thought it was on the phone, the Rage Shadow Legends. Was perfect. Because in just a few days, they would be exhibiting a show on Rembrandt anyway, and they not only had him back, but a story to go along with it. The painting was unveiled as the centerpiece, this time behind glass, and with a specially assigned security guard standing by its side. So the Cadham brothers and Alexander Lindgren were convicted of receiving stolen goods. However, their sentences were overturned by a Swedish appeals court ruling that they had been provoked into the crime. Well done. But... What?! Brothers and Alexander Lindgren were convicted of receiving stolen goods. However, their sentences were overturned by a Swedish appeals court ruling that they had been provoked into the crime. Well done. But, as for our hero, well, Whitman hung up his They case, got off, dude! And nothing has ever been stolen again. The end. <laughs> what a good video, dude. Man, this channel is awesome, man. This channel's so good. What? 1.5k? How can you dislike this? When the Mona Lisa was stolen, the guy just walked up to it and took it off the wall and hid it under his jacket. He tried to exit out of the side door, but it was locked. But then an employee came by and saw a guy in a trench coat holding a frame painting trying to get out. The guard unlocked the door for him and let him out? Nobody noticed the Mona Lisa was stolen for something like two or three days. Is this true? When an artist who wanted to paint a copy complained and a bored guard went searching, only then they realized it's gone.